I just got done recording 12 minutes of video. I was wrapping things up and I... YouTube did something wrong and I lost the whole video, so this is me having to re-record everything. Take two. Hi. So, before I begin, I want to talk about the weekend and then I, I'll get into the business. Um, Halloween is big here. Uh, we get 300 trick-or-treaters. It is a huge event. We have uh, probably five haunted houses in the area, and they compete to see who is better. It's it's epic. We start getting trick-or-treaters around 5.30, and things pretty much wrap up around 8.30. But if you keep your lights on, okay, who am I kidding? If you keep your lights, if, if you're there, um, you still see trick-or-treaters coming around as late as 10.30 at night. Um, it is a community, but the neighborhood really gets involved. It's one of the best neighborhoods I've seen for trigger treating. Getting to what I want to talk about, down the street um, there is this, these, these, uh, these people put up this massive uh, lattice wall and they had a guy sitting behind the wall. His sole duty for this evening was, for that evening, was to slip his hand through the lattice work and grab at people. He was dressed as a zombie and there were probably three or four other people all dressed in scrubs. They had the contacts to make their eyes look like zombies and they had scattered the yard with shredded limbs and pieces of human corpse. They also had from The Walking Dead, that's right, I'm talking about The Walking Dead, they had a, a zombie fixture set up identical to what you saw in movie uh, episode one, season one. Um, with that, with what Rick sees before he gets on the bicycle and rides away still in his uh, hospital gown. Uh, they had that set up in the yard and then this, this is the, this is just amazing. Um, they had, the, the house looked very similar, almost identical to the house that uh, Carl was in when he grabbed the 10 gallon uh, can of pudding and was sitting out on the, uh, on the roof. And on the top where in the movie when you saw or in the episode when you saw the zombie reaching at, at Carl eating the pudding, they had a very similar window and they put a projector up so it played through and looped a two to three minute video. The video, and it's all silhouette, so it looks like this is all happening inside and it was done so effectively that we thought they hired people to stand inside the house and, and actually proceed with this. Um, you had to sit there and watch it three or four times before you realized it was way too predictable to see every single motion. It was that convincing. And they had, the, the video consisted of um, these people throwing themselves against the window, clawing to try and get out, and you see zombies coming up behind them, and you see them being pulled down a few minutes later, you, or a few seconds later, you see the intestines literally being pulled out of the, out of the body, and they're eating the insides of these people. You see then as things go quiet, you see the new, the new zombies rise up again and then they start the massive zombie walk past the window. Um, everything goes clear again and then they throw themselves up against the window like zombies clawing at you to try and get out to have more food. Food, yeah, people. It was amazing. It was just, it was just a phenomenal, they were my heroes. Like I idolized them and I, uh, I have this urge to want to one up them. I'm like, I want to do it. So it was, it was just an astounding, astounding video. Um, so it was a wonderful Halloween. I just talked for four minutes on The Walking Dead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, back to business. Um, Brain to Books is closing. Uh, I need to clarify the website only is closing. Um, I realized that I was not getting enough traffic in to justify the, year, uh, the annual expense. Uh, so I have transferred all of the pages and posts off of the website and moved them over to Facebook. Um, you're going to see the link down below. Um, so um, basically if there's, I've divided it into three categories. Um, all the blog tour posts from the summer blog tour will be in one category. There is also the uh, classroom which is for beginner authors uh, new to the publishing world or if you're wanting to go back and see if there's anything you missed possibly, um, that's also something you can do with Classroom. It covers how to get started with publication uh, for new authors and what you can expect. It walks you through a lot of the process right up step by step as to how to work with Amazon, how to work with Smashwords, whatnot. 
Um, and there's more, more uh, articles to come with that. In addition, uh, there's also the, uh, the business side of publication. I'm not going to lie. We're all authors here. We all detest the business side of publication. I took to it like a fish out of water. I absolutely love and adore the business side. Um, so this is a collection of articles that I've written and accumulated from other authors, blog posters, to help with understanding how the business side of publication works. Um, the Brain to Books is really not the place to go if you're looking, learning how to write. I do give um, options in other locations, um, but this is really about publication and how to learn the business, how to market, and how to design advertising, expenses. Um, I have made the decision. I, this is something I've been really battling since I got into publication. Um, I'm huge on stats. I love numbers. I love sitting down and reviewing my stats. And it's actually an addiction that I need to really pull off of because I love checking my website every day to see how my traffic has fluctuated. I really need to stop because it takes away from the writing. Um, I have decided, due to the lack of statistics out there, to post all my sales uh, on a monthly basis so you as an author can go in and compare your own sales to see honestly I don't know what normal is and I don't think a lot of us do know what to expect or what normal is because there is a shortage um, I am sending a call out to all authors if you are not shy please share your stats uh, send them on over you can copy cut paste a uh, display from Amazon and they will be placed side by side with mine I, I can keep you anonymous um, so it's just to get an idea and enough accumulation uh, so other people can see what normal is. And this is the best thing about this. If somebody is doing something exceptionally well where their sales are three, four times what ours, uh, what ours are, the question that we can lead up with is what are you doing differently that we're not? So we can tweak it, improve it, whatnot. Um, and again, um, my email address is down below. So by all means, please, if you are willing to share your statistics, your sales, your website traffic, any kind of statistics at all. We really need to start accumulating numbers. That way we can compare. And I will say again, we can definitely keep this anonymous. Um, I will not be displaying any kind of, um, I will probably post your genre, like in your book count or your word count approximation, but I will not give out your identity. I will not give out any kind of information that will identify you with the statistics that are presented. I am looking for all and any statistics. Um, I currently have all of mine up, which is from May when I first posted, right on up to the current day, and I will be updating mine. Um, I just started a Facebook ad, my first paid publication, my first paid ad. Um, and I, um, I, I did a before shot of my statistics and I will be doing an after shot in 30 days to show you if and what difference the ad made with my sales. So, and again, we'll also be reviewing that to see uh, what we're going to be looking at. Um, back to Facebook Brain to Books though, um, you're going to see everything you need there. I'm also going to be converting all my Brain to Books information over to Facebook. Um, my website is geared toward readers. It's something that I've noticed a lot of authors are doing. Um, we have, I'm part of a group, and there's probably 200 of us in this group, and we're cycling each other over. We're all writers, and we're all buying each other's books, we're all reviewing each other's books, but we're not seeing very many readers. And um, one of the things that I looked at, um, somebody made a comment about, is anyone getting any readers, or are we just cycling each other over? So I stepped back from social media for a few weeks, and I started looking at everyone's uh, websites. Um, if I know you, I went to your website and I pulled up your information. I looked through the articles you were posting and I just in general did an overview what is it that everyone here is posting. 99% of us are posting writing tips and we are talking about writing and publication. Um, which is why I'm, I've separated Brain to Books on one end and Angela B. Chrysler on the other. Um, our readers are not writers. Um, our readers are readers and they're mostly interested in books. Uh, so what I've been doing is uh, focusing my website uh, toward readers instead of writers. Um, one of the things that, um, and I, I found myself doing this, I did have quite a few articles that were on writing tips, and I pulled those from my site and moved them over to Brain to Books. Um, but um, just a writing or a publication writing tip is if you are finding that you are getting um, the majority of writers as fans instead of readers, uh, try redesigning your website so that it is designed with a reader in mind. 
Pretend you are a reader who has absolutely no interest in anything this author has to say, and you are quite literally just there for uh, for the rating. Um, and that's what I did. And when I did that, it completely changed my perspective on how I designed my website and what kind of content I decided to post. So I, mean, I was posting um, more book reviews. I was posting more recommended reading as opposed to writing tips. Um, everything really started to gear more toward the reading. Um, and sure enough, I did see a boost in reader following as opposed to writer following. And because I don't know very many readers, um, it actually brought me in a lot of new people and started breaking out of that writing circle that we, we've developed. So stop cocooning yourself and try focusing more on readers and not writers. Um, and if you are going to go that route with writers, I suggest you create another page that gears yourself just toward that or keep it condensed. Um, you really want your, fo your website focused on the readers who you want to read your books. Um, I am going to do a quick push here on hashtags. Uh, just keep in mind, if you're not using hashtags, use them. I do have a how to yes hashtag over at Brain to Books, and I include a complete list on which ones readers use and readers like. Again, um, if you are writing writing tips on Twitter and you are constantly posting out am editing am writing and authors, you're probably going to attract far more authors, readers, write are far more editors and writers than you are readers. So think think about the reader. Um, I am also, uh, let me see here, I want to push you with the bookshelf. The bookshelf is on Goodreads. It is a group that I put together that accumulates nothing but readers, um, well actually readers and writers. It is not meant as a meet and greet. It is not meant for a authors or readers meet the authors. And it is certainly not a place where authors can push or sell their books. Um, it is actually a place where I'm gearing the entire uh, the entire group toward readers to get more readers in, and basically uh, authors go in, they shelve their books on the appropriate genre, and then they slip back into the background. Uh, this way, um, readers can go in and, without any sales or spamming, they can just view the information without a problem. Um, I think that's really all I have to say about. Um, as you, as I said, you will find everything you need right there, all my links, and that should connect you to everything. Oh yes, one last news that I should probably share with you. I am leaving. I'm going to try to. I am addicted to social media and I really need to back off of it. And I've been saying that for several months now and every time I step aside I'm, I'm pulled back in. Here it is on a Monday, it's 10.51 and all I've done is social media this morning. So, I am pulling the plug on me, and I battled with my willpower plenty of times for this one, and I'm, my willpower will win this one. And I'm going to shut off the computer and not come back until December 1st, and I'm lying. I am going to try to not touch the computer, except for Fridays, unless I'm writing, and this is, like I said, this is hard for me. I have to tell you about Sammy. Sammy is my little Samson netbook. I love Sammy. I can go get her if you want. She was a cute little netbook that I bought a few years ago, and I used to carry her around with me everywhere. Dollar and Shadow was written on Sammy, probably 80% of Dollar and Shadow, no, no, 95% uh, of Dollar and Shadow was written on Sammy. And the reason why I had Sammy was because if I was at work or if I was on lunch, I would pull the computer out and I would write. Internet access was not allowed on this computer. You see where I'm going with this. Um, it was a sad day two years ago. It was a drizzly September day. and I was having my morning cup of coffee. And I'm a klutz. And I dumped my coffee all over Sammy's computer. It shorted out, and uh, it was a sad day. In my panic, I thought the best thing to do would be to turn her back on. Not my brightest moment, but okay. Um, Sammy has not worked since. I still have her because I cannot bear to bury her, so maybe I should. So, Sammy sits over there for two years now not working, which has pushed me onto the computer where I now do all my writing. So, the computer distracts me. 
I'm weak. So, I am going to be going away now, and um, you can always email me. I'm pretty much pausing and pulling back on all my projects. Uh, you'll find for more events. I have a few things going on this month that you will find here. So, um, if there's anything you need, uh, send me an email. And like I said, my response time is probably extending now to 48 hours. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, and may the kindest of words always find you.